Jersey Live from the home of Al Capone, Michael Jordan, and Deep Dish Pizza. Pizza. Giving it to you straight from the horse's mouth. Unfiltered and restoring hope to the podcast universe. Gary Franchi. Back. Welcome back to the G cast. Welcome back. That intro always makes me hungry. It makes me giggle. It makes me g- I think about the pizza part though. Yeah. You know, and you got the mm, deep dish going on. Pizza. We're in Chicago, baby. God. You haven't lived unless you've had Giordano's or Lou's. Well, there's a big fight. There is a major fight going on in Chicago. There's a big debate. Yeah. I mean, hands down, we know that Chicago pizza is better than New York. That pizza is like floppy flat pizza oh, i nothing. love new york pizza too though but it's back up back no, up whoa <laughs> we're already we're already getting into a fight here it's valentine's day oh my god show some love you know what's cool about giordano's pizza is it giordano's right they make the heart-shaped pizza <gasps> yeah oh yeah we did that you did that for me once mm-hmm. you got me a whole heart-shaped pizza i did that was so nice i made you. strawberry margaritas do you remember that i think i do yeah. no, i think i blacked out though you did <laughs> probably we drank a lot of Spe- those margaritas well, speaking of chicago uh you know it is valentine's day mm-hmm. and there is something huge to celebrate today because we're talking about al capone chicago today in history on this date in 1929 seven rivals of al capone died in the saint valentine's day massacre it's actually really not something to celebrate it's not something to celebrate gary it's a bad story but it's, it is chicago that's part of chicago do you remember going there with me like we scoped it out well, it's, it's now it's just like a, a grass field. Like yeah. they tore that whole garage down mm-hmm. and you can't yeah. really, you know, I think they say it's haunted. The space is haunted itself. Yeah. it was. Oh, that's why we were there. We have that Chicago haunts book. Yeah. We've done a lot of that stuff. We, we were so ghost funny. Hunting. We did. We went yeah. ghost hunting. In Cuba Road. Oh my God. Cuba. Somebody posted on Facebook about Cuba Road recently. I thought that was pretty cool. Huh. That was back in the day in your blazer. Mm-hmm. Was it a blazer? Or my Explorer? Oh, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. My old Ford Explorer. Yeah. That was so much fun. Yeah. So we got a lot to talk about today. Mm. We're going to talk about the history of Valentine's Day. We've also got a update on the coronavirus and China's new disinfectant tunnel, which is rather terrifying. Yeah. Also, we're going to talk about the fall of Joe Biden. Joe Biden's campaign is in free fall and Bernie Sanders is rising and the DNC is very nervous. The establishment DNC is very nervous. Mm. Uh, to the point where you've got pundits like James Carville in meltdown mode on Joe Scarborough. That was intense to watch. Yeah, we're going to play that yeah. later. Uh, also, of course, the dog dog face pony soldier. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy <laughs> discussing that with you. Joe, Joe Biden, what is he doing? Uh, and also, we got some more Oscar talk because Brad Pitt and... Um, uh, well, they're just turning turning these events political they always have it's, it's a history right it's so, a history of it um, yeah so we'll, we'll, you and i have some differing opinions on that so we'll talk about that we do a little bit yeah. and we've also got uh oh president trump's tweet today oh that was beautiful out of all the tweets i've ever seen that one made me choke on my coffee yeah it was hilarious we're gonna talk about <laughs> one of trump's tweets and we've got some clips we're gonna do a little flashback flashback friday hmm. showing some uh some fun stuff the president responding. But there's a lot to talk about today. Yeah, can't make any of this stuff up. No, this is the real deal. This is the news. And it's this intense. Is, it's uh, crazy. Fun. Oh, plus, we, oh, yeah, I should. How can I forget? We have a huge, huge <laughs> in studio guest next week. It's so exciting. We'll be sitting right across from us, and we have some things to talk about. Important that, things. Important things related to Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And I think it's also related to a larger problem that's plaguing the globe. Yeah. And we're going to dive into some topics next week uh, with a very, very influential person in yeah. studio. So you, if you're watching right now, you want to make sure that you hit the link below to subscribe to make sure you get updated. Very important. Very I got important. goosebumps just thinking about it, Gare. Yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. I'm really excited. Me too. So where do we begin? Valentine's Day? Oh, happy Valentine's Day again. Oh, thank you, honey. Yeah. We've got (laughs) the history of uh, the history of Valentine's Day. 
That's cute. What um? What's our time code? Because this is, we're supposed to do five minutes of opening teases. Has it been five minutes yet? I don't think so. Maybe it's like been three. maybe three. Three. Yeah. I wish I had a clock in here that worked. <laughs> oh, we're at fourteen. We're fourteen <laughs> minutes left. Oh. <laughs> so. You sent me a link as well this morning, honey, regarding uh, the ancient Greeks, eight words. Yeah. You know, I like to point out at any time when I can mm -hmm. how important it is that you're married to me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm yeah. Greek, baby. Oh, yes. Yes, you are. Oh, God. It's funny, though, but if you know me, I'm, you know, I can't help but be Greek. But it's not my thing to be like I'm Greek, Greek pride. All this. No, stuff, yeah. You there's know? there's some people that just wear their Greekness yeah. like a flag. Uh, yeah, well, like, literally. Like, like wearing a tracksuit like, with the like with you. the American flag yeah, on it. Like you. <laughs> yeah, I wear my America on my sleeve, literally. <laughs> yes. And some people wear their Greekness on their sleeve at the same yeah. time. Yeah, or drive around with the Greek flag in their car. You oh know, yeah, in the rearview. Yeah. Or they have like a little mini Parthenon in their front yard. I did. You and I actually, <laughs> <laughs> you and I actually have. A, 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 um, a courtship story that very closely mirrors my big fat Greek wedding. Oh, it totally does. It's it's so it, to the point where they oh. almost made a reality show based on us. Yeah. Years ago, when we were in our thank like, God planning they did stages, it. yeah, it would have it would have been a. Oh I think God. your parents and your family recognized that we were going to all be exploited as <laughs> Greek freaks. <laughs> well, look how we're embraced now. Yeah. I mean, the more crazier, the better. Well, now you, they have to embrace me. Yeah. Because they love you. Before, I was like, you know, who is this American? You mm -hmm. know? <laughs> now you can't get rid of me. No. I'm contractually obligated to care for your daughter. <laughs> oh, God. They love you. Oh, I love, I love, love your you family. so much. I love your parents. I Thank love your you. family. Well, because I'm Italian Irish. So yeah. I come from a crazy, you know, drunken food and. <laughs> food infested family Aww. um well i wouldn't say that all us. that yeah, and maybe that's probably not the right way to no you just come from a really big family and when i thought we had so little in common i realized how much we really did well the the drinking and the eating you know i always tell people i can drink like a mick and i can eat like a dago <laughs> that's <laughs> like terrible. my thing it's true you currently have meatballs like casseroles in the refrigerator of meatballs mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> I love it. I love my meatballs and I love my pizza. Yeah. And uh, but I'm on a keto diet, so I can't really eat the pizza. No. Thankfully, Lou's makes that sausage crust for pizza. Valentine's Day too, though. That we could have done that for dinner. Mm -hmm. So but what about this history of Valentine's okay, so Day? Okay, so history of How Valentine's Day. How important is it? Because it's not so important now, is it? Well, what's interesting is it's a hallmark. I went to the I went to the Encyclopedia Britannica. I felt like I was I doing, saw you do, do that. I, I felt like I was doing like a homework assignment, you know? Yeah. I'm going to the Encyclopedia Britannica. Google, what is love? What is love? <laughs> Baby, don't hurt me no more. You did. I did. I yeah. opened up with a song. Yes! I <laughs> love when you do that. I love it. But I, do, is that, isn't that the one where they do the thing like... Oh, dun, yeah. Dun, 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 Night dun, at the Roxbury. Dun. Yeah. I love that show. That was such a good movie. I'm going to get a suit just like those guys. I promise. You could rock it. So okay. Valentine's Day, also called St. Valentine's Day, it's when lovers express their affection with greetings and gifts. The holiday has origins in the Roman festival. Here we go. We're going to get pagan for a minute. <laughs> Lupercalia. I'm probably not saying that correct. Mm. Mm. Held in mid-February. The festival, which celebrated the coming, in, coming of spring, included fertility rites and the pairing of women... Pairing off of women with men by lottery. Ugh. That sounds like an interest. It's like, here you go. We're going to put our hand in a bag and you're going to pick. That's who you get. Wow. Yeah. Glad I wasn't around back then. <laughs> At the end of the 5th century, Pope Galatius. Always a pope. Always pope, a pope Galatius involved. is always a pope. So. <laughs> Speaking of popes, you know, I actually have a pope in my lineage. You do. Yeah. I knew. I knew. Yeah. Pope... Um, Pope Pius the Ninth, I believe. His last name is Ferretti, and that and that's he's on like your my great side, my, my father's, my side, father's side on my grandmother, and that goes up. To, uh, she, he was like an uncle, so he'd be like a great great uncle. So anyway, <laughs> that's um, wild. So I have a pope in my family. Anyway, Pope Gal Galas whatever Galasius the mm. first re replaced good enough replaced Pope good enough. <laughs> Pope good enough. 
You know what's funny, man? I am so bad this at names sometimes. This is funny. Though. I'm so oh, bad at God. names. When I do the news, like I butcher people's names all day long. It's I'm you sure can, like people watch my news and they're like, Franchi, mm. open your mouth when you talk. You mumble. You're from Chicago. Anyway. Uh, Pope, That's why you can't. <laughs> Pope Galatius the first replaced Lupercalia with St. Valentine's Day. It became celebrated as a day of romance from about the 14th century. Oh, who cares? <laughs> and then the History <laughs> Channel... This is from history.com. Mm, okay. Others claim that the Christian church may have decided to replace St. Talon's St. Valentine's St. Valentine's feast day in the middle of February as an effort to Christianize the pagan celebration. Oh boy. Always trying to bring those pagans around. To Always Jesus. trying to bring them around. If we got to change the date of Christmas, we're going to change the date of Christmas. <laughs> We're going to change the date of Valentine's Day oh, so all you gosh. pagans will understand St. Valentine and what he did. Yeah. I always do like talking about, like, the Christian element of uh, the pagan origins of oh, it's our so modern interesting, Christian huh? and uh, our modern uh, Christmas, you know. Yeah. Don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. Don't ruin Christmas. Santa Claus is real. St. Nicklaus. Yeah. Well, Saint Nicklaus. he was Greek, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then who else you have um you have you guys can't hear it but our producer is talking in our ear and we're, we're having all this side conversations <laughs> so and it's I'm, like i'm trying not to laugh at i Christian, know that's why angie's funny. laughing Christian's and she's funny anyway um <laughs> so angie what do you have any valentine's day stories i think if my memory serves me correctly you showed up at my girlfriend's <laughs> house when we were teenagers with a bouquet of flowers, which I still have, all mm -hmm. dried. And you showed up with your friend Petro, and Petro. he was playing the bazooki in the back of your mom and dad's van. That's right. Yeah. Petro and the bazooki. Yeah. Well, I figured if I'm going to get this Greek girl, I better do it right. Aww. And my buddy growing up still is Petro. And of course, his family owns a, a company that makes gyros, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and pita bread. Oh God, it's so it's good. So typical, but it's so delicious. It's so the best. So we got Petro in the back mm -hmm. playing the bazooki, and he just like yeah, made it real. That gave you major points with yeah. me, because yeah. I, you know. Well, you ran. You ran like you're like I'm. I don't want a relationship. We you, were babies. You ran. You're like I ain't getting involved. No. And I had to shut the door for two weeks and just pretend like I didn't care. Yeah. And then you rang, you called. I did. You called. Because you couldn't you couldn't stay away from from Big G. Big G, <laughs> Captain. Captain G. <laughs> captain. Uh, Your tracksuit says Captain. It does. I love that people get to see this side of you. Yeah. During the podcast, because you are you are hysterical. People have no you idea. You love to just have fun. Yeah. You're playful. You're you're great to be around, you know. People have no idea. People have no idea. The, the character no. I play no. on the news. I mean, legitimately, look, I love doing the news. I yeah. love presenting. You're passionate I love being, about it. That's I love being thing. serious and straight up about the things I believe in, and presenting those commentaries and reading news. Yeah. Like I love that. But, but you but have then, to have that balance. Yeah, That's then you've where... got to. You've got to shed that skin, and you've got to... It's Friday! Yeah. Let's get it on! You bust you know? out the potato... What was it? The potato launcher? Oh, the potato gun? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how you unwind. They got the you potato know. launcher and a bottle of Jack, and we're going to have some fun this weekend. <laughs> you know? But I can't really drink uh, Jack anymore because of the carbs, so I can just drink yeah. vodka most of Straight them. vodka. <laughs> Is that what's in your cup? I, I'm, a, I'm a vodka. I'm a vodka. Is that your cocktail tonight? Yeah, I'm drinking straight, oh. straight vodka in my uh, <laughs> G-Cast mug. Yeah. But Valentine's Day, Garrett, come on. We don't mm. really make a big deal out of it. Now that we have children, mm -hmm. I totally went out. And this is a cute story. Mm -hmm. I don't do this, but I went out last night and I got cards for all three of our boys and you. And it was just the cutest thing. I saw people doing the same thing I was doing right near the cards like reading every single one and everybody was silent like it was a serious moment like mm -hmm. picking the right card and then you'd hear a little giggle off here and there maybe they're reading a funny cute valentine's day card you know 
but I had a moment with some people there and it was it was just it was sweet and innocent and it was just nice to have a moment of like you know everything's okay in the world we're celebrating love right yeah one love there's so one much to love. celebrate in the world <laughs> and even though we have this crazy it's a crazy world every week it's like oh my goodness I go through the stories. I go through the news. I get. It's. I, it feels like the news cycle just beats you down. It does. It does. It's, it's trying. Hard. It's really trying, and especially with the with the level of division that we have in the country today. It's so sad. And you see, like the Facebook flame wars, and you see, I mean, just Twitter is a cesspool of filth with people attacking each other. It's breeding this real nasty, mm -hmm. yeah. unsafe. Yeah. scary feeling i don't like to feel like that that's why i look forward to the podcast baby you know i, I really look forward to it too because it's a it is a, a break from the tradition it's mm -hmm. a break from the hard news of the week i get yeah. to spend time with you producing a show and i think yeah. that's really i think i'm so excited it's really fun to do that yeah. to have like your your input directly um i don't yeah. know i hear people talking what is it's the, the pizza people guy under here? the stairs <clears throat> um <laughs> It's a pizza, dude. So the Greek city times, the ancient Greeks had eight words that correspond to different types of love. Oh. Give it to me. Eros. Eros. <laughs> Why do you do that? <laughs> I do the Greek. Eros. I, I just want to slap you. Eros. Oh, God. Romantic. Show some chest hair when you talk like that. I have to pull out the chest hair? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Pull, it out. pull out the chest hair. Well, it, it is braided underneath here. It's quite, you know, my Italian side. Um, oh. Eros is romantic, passionate love. Mm -hmm. And then there's, well, you got it listed there. Yeah, we can go down the list. So I think right there. Yep. No? You got it? What is? How do you say it in the Greek? Uh, agapi is love. No, no, the next one. Under agapi? Eros. 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 See, yeah. <laughs> you do it. You do it. You do it naturally. But yeah. then when I do it, you make fun of me. Yeah. Wow, thanks. Because you make a joke out of my language. <laughs> <laughs> is that being racist? Am I, is that what? It's not being racist because no, it's just you. It's just, <laughs> it's just you. Okay, I love so it's you. Edels, edels. Because I've got pride. Okay, <laughs> you get under my skin when you make fun okay, of me. Okay, <laughs> and the next one is philia. Sure. <laughs> How do you say it? Phileo. So How do you say it? Phileo. Philia. No. Philia. Chris. Like, Chris. Like. Chris. Phil Philopit. Okay. Philia. Say it, Angie. Philia. Philia. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And that's affectionate love. Yeah. Brotherly and then love. we have <laughs> Chris, please. <laughs> we have Chris going for Chris is like in the background. Throwing like his two cents kid. in here. Um mm -hmm. Okay, then you have Agape. 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 When I say Agape Mu, it means my love. We say that to the boys all the time. All the time, yeah. Agape Mu. Yeah. Did I say it right? Yeah. Okay. And that means selfless, selfless, universal love. Isn't that beautiful? How beautiful is that? Couldn't we use this right now, all this? Well, and I think they talk about Christ having agape love. Yes. You know, that's Absolutely. that's a term that is often seen in Christian circles, mm -hmm. defining the love of God. Yes. And the love of Christ, who is our Savior, and what he did, selfless, a selfless act in sacrificing himself for us. So the Lord took agape love. I'm about to cry. Aww. It's like whenever I think about those things, it's pretty um, it's pretty emotional. And then you, yes. what's the next word? Storage? Storage. How do you say Storage? it? Storage? Really, I don't know how. Storge? Storge. Familiar love. It's familiar love. So, um, storge? Storge? Yeah. I don't think. Storge? Storge? Whatever. Someone in the comments, <sighs> help us out here. You're good. Um, oh, this is good. Oh, this is fun. What's the next one? mania yeah yeah i heard that a lot growing up <laughs> yeah all of our bipolar <laughs> friends out there you know what that means oh. mania obsessive love you know that's like, that's like a crazy love that's like yeah. that's like stalker love that's like well stalker love is not really there's not i don't know that's just delusional like it's one-sided stalker yeah usually so obsessive absolutely um luda Lut Ludus love? Yeah. It's playful love. 
That that when I think of that, I think of two puppies playing like just like wrestling. You're so other. cute today. That's what I think about. Okay. So all these. What go about back. the next one? We got a couple seconds left. Pragma. Pragma, enduring love, and philotima. Philotima. Philotia. Yeah. All right, folks. We'll be right back with an update on the coronavirus on Valentine's Day. You're watching the. <laughs> Spreading love. Spreading love. Spreading oh, love. God. So, yeah, we're going to go to a pretty hard topic in a minute. So, we'll see you on see the See you side. back. The G Cast will be right back after this short break from our sponsors. Everybody, welcome right. back, baby. Hey, we're back. We are back. Yeah. So, what are we going to talk about now, Ange? Woo! We're going to go back to the coronavirus now. Yeah, we're going to we're going to sort of bring things down a little bit. Get a little serious. Get a little serious here. It is getting a little serious. Uh, you know what's funny is that there was, seemed to be a lull in the in the news on the coronavirus. It seemed like because I I pay very close attention to it. Yeah. And there just seemed to be not much to talk about, even though it's still festering in the background all around the world. But now suddenly, this morning, today, we're seeing a lot more on it. People are are more concerned about it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was out yesterday, and I see people wearing masks. What? Oh, yeah. There are people wearing masks? Oh, yes. Where? Um, at the salon I was at. You know, there's a mom there with a young child, so she's got every right to be concerned she doesn't want to bring anything back she sees a lot of clients there so she's wearing a mask and plus a it's salon from our, was it our friend salon no no another salon was it an asian salon where they do the nails no it was not because well, oh. a lot of those salons are a lot of asian people right it wasn't a salon because for nails i mean we're talking about the muhan virus and there's i think it was one of the stories of the original person who came here mm -hmm. worked in one of those locations 
initially. Gosh, it's possible. I don't know. So I'm not I'm not trying to be like stereotypical or anything, but no. so uh, Reuters s- says no peak in sight as China reports five thousand new coronavirus cases. What's that first image we've got for this? What is that image? Um, Japan reports its first death. Third outside of mainland China. President Trump lauding China's response. A top advisor is more critical. And some 55,748 people are currently undergoing treatment. While 1,380 people have died of the flu-like virus. Oh, that picture on the screen right there. That's that new, that new, like, machine. That's the machine that they're they're running people through to detect. I mean, how terrifying them. does that look, right? Do we can we get that video? There's a video of that. Can we play that? Look at that. Look at that. Take it take it full screen so we can see that thing. Look at built in two days. Look at this. Sterilizing system that cleans people on their way to work with medical disinfectant spray. Oh wow. And it, it's like just set up in a park. Oh my goodness. And here's another one. Looks like just like a, a mister that people are walking through. Holy cow. Is that really working? I mean. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, this, this, that video is from Reuters. And that's what, that's what they're using in China. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is serious still. And we were just talking with, with Christian about, you know, people comparing it to the flu. This is so new. It's it's scary. We don't have it under control. <laughs> well, the CDC enough. The CDC says it's coming. Yeah. How, that's and a nice to headline. Expect it like it's going to be another flu season or something. Yeah, he says you know right? it's going to be like as commonplace as a flu season. Yeah. Oh really? No, I don't want to have. It's to coming. Deal with that. CDC director warns coronavirus to become widespread throughout the United States, probably beyond 2020. Well, that's hopeful. Right now, we're in an aggressive containment mode. Yeah. They've got kits that they're trying to utilize to, to detect the, the virus, but they're not working adequately yet, you know? It's well, all new, and it's it should be scary. I think we saw just before we started the podcast, there was another news story regarding a coronavirus test kit that would be able to detect... Mm-hmm. coronavirus within two hours of you taking the test but you know what terrifies me as i think about the containment people self-quarantining or being in forced quarantine what happens now suddenly that you are suspected you're suspected you have coronavirus what do you and but but you just have a cold you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. now what now you're going to be in a forced quarantine in your home people are going to be afraid to go to even talk to you like, I think that there could be some serious, uh, like, ripple effect things that could happen if if this doesn't get uh, clamped down. I don't believe in our lifetime we've experienced anything like this to this extent where they're being quarantined in their homes this is, long, but, this but is ongoing. This, is this fear real or is it manufactured? Oh, oh gosh, I, it's real to me. <laughs> It's real to me. Um, I don't know. I really hope that we get this under control. Well, right now, U.S. officials report that fifteenth, the fifteenth case of coronavirus in the United States, official fifteenth. Mm-hmm. So, let's just put that into perspective for a minute. Yeah, fifteen people in all of the country. Right now, China is. I mean, what they're dealing with there is insane. But. Only 15 people in the country. When we started talking about this, I think there was, what, eight or six? It was a real, I mean, it was, was, again, another low number, sure. Low numbers. Mm -hmm. This was weeks ago. And now we're only at 15 confirmed in the country? I I think that by the rate of growth that we're seeing in just these confirmed cases, I don't think it's as bad as as it really is. No, I mean, I, I agree with you on that. I, it could be really, really worse. But it, again, it's so new and there's still so much to learn about this virus. 
and where it's going. So the uncertainty of that is what frightens me. Coronavirus can be spread by people who don't show symptoms. Yeah, there's been cases where people have been cleared because they're not showing symptoms and they go out into the public and they are carrying the virus. So, yeah. It's insane. Mm -hmm. It's insane. But at, like I said, I think that because we have only 15 confirmed cases, this uh, this article from Zero Hedge regarding the CDC director, I'm going to pull that up here. Um, you guys don't have it on, on that shot. I could pull up Zero Hedge on the other com computer here. Zero Hedge. I love that website. I can't believe they got banned from Twitter. What a bunch mm. of, What a mess. Okay, you can pull up my NDI shot. There it is. Okay, um, that's the article I'm talking about. It's coming. CDC director warns coronavirus to become widespread. <laughs> Look at the headline below. Happy Valentine's Day, except if you're a Trump supporter. Okay, let's see here. Uh, it's coming. The extremely virulent coronavirus, which is sweeping through China like wildfire will eventually gain a foothold in the United States, becoming a community virus this year or next. What the heck is a community virus? And why does this guy look like C. Everett Koop? Do they all look like C. Everett Koop? Remember that guy? Remember? Do you, do you guys remember C. Everett? He was the original uh, head of the, the health department or federal, the doctor, you know, like the surgeon general. Remember that guy? Yeah, I know. He's the Surgeon about. General. He was like like the most famous Surgeon General. He had all these campaigns. But this guy looks like the like uh, C. Everett Oh, Coop. boy. Anyway, um, he says, we don't know a lot about this virus. Redfeld, Redfield told CNN's Dr. Sanjay Gupta, this virus is probably with us beyond this season. And I think eventually the virus will find a foothold and we will get community-based transmission. Okay, how about you do your damn job, man? Mm. Angie? Yeah. It's Valentine's Day. Yeah. This is not the way I wanted to spend my evening with you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the podcast, babe. I'm just kidding. As of Thursday, 15 cases have been confirmed. Eight in California, two in Illinois. So only two in Illinois. It's the same two. I think it's important to to follow up and keep an eye on this everyone should be you know and mm -hmm. and do what you need to do like any kind of cold or or virus that's going around wash your hands don't go out if you're sick don't spread this around so taking it to that level of seriousness absolutely so they are trying to get a, a vaccine and antiviral drugs set set up mm -hmm. redfield says while more research is needed, the CDC is focused on containment strategies to isolate and slow the progression of the novel so important. coronavirus. So important to contain it. Slow it, will it, down. Be, it will be a community virus at some point in time later next year. We don't have any evidence that this coronavirus is really embedded in the community at this time. But with that said, we will intensify our surveillance so that we're basing those conclusions based on data. I should hope so. What's the Bible verse? Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. There you go. Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. Check out. <laughs> yeah. So wash your hands, boys and girls. Wash your hands. Yeah. So we're going to come back and we're going to be talking about in the C block. Oh, this is going to be good. James Carville, Bernie Sanders, the dog face pony soldier. It's so crazy. Let's, let's talk about that. Yeah, that's next. We'll see you in a minute. We gotta pay a few bills over here, so sit tight, and the GCast will return in a few moments.
return to the G-Cast with your host, Gary Franchi. And we are back in the C block of the G cast with my beloved bride. Here we are. Happy Valentine's Happy Day, Valentine's everyone. Day. Yeah. Yeah. So, so <laughs> much to talk about here. We got uh, Bernie Sanders coming up. Yeah. Coming up. He's He was a big player in 2016. He was huge. You know, and I he's think. He's got a huge following for sure. He's got a huge following. He's got popular support. I don't agree with his policies at all, but I think that people resonate with his message and people want free stuff. <laughs> Everything's free. Mm. You get a car. You get a car. You get a car. You get a college education. You get a college education. You get free health care. We're giving away everything for free. And guess what? The billionaires are going to pay for it. Come on down. Yeah. But unfortunately, there's just not enough billionaires in the country to pay for everything. Mm. I think that's a bigger problem. And there will be even less if Bernie's policies are implemented. But uh, so Bernie Sanders is, is rising up and Biden. Wow. He is falling like a rock. Biden has <laughs> no chance of survival. I mean, coming out of Iowa. I just don't see it. What was he? What was he like fourth or fifth place or third place in Iowa? Mm -hmm. I mean, who, who even knows? Like Iowa is so, such a cluster. He cannot shake the image that everyone has of him in their heads. What? Him smelling little girls? Yeah. 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 There was Bernie. There were some Bernie supporters that were, uh, that were actually that and everything he out. does just kind of feeds into what we are thinking about him already. Well, and. With respect to Bernie Sanders, and you've also got uh, James Carville. This is interesting because James Carville, he's a longtime Democrat operative, mm -hmm. you know, Clinton, Clintonista type person, and he's freaking out at what Bernie Sanders is doing to the party, which is essentially turning it into a complete socialist party. Uh, I think there was a clip that someone sent me on Facebook, and I was looking at it, and it's basically an old interview of Bernie Sanders years and years ago when he was the mayor of Burlington, Vermont. And in it, they straight up call him a socialist. Not a Democrat socialist, but a straight socialist. Yeah. See, they try to change the terminology, whether it's, you know, socialist, but they put another word in front of it. Or they want to call it something else. Sure. I mean, they change the term of global warming every, you know, every time that their story falls apart. They have something new to call it. Anyway, right. um, what do you think? For the for him to come out this disturbed and this freaked out over Bernie Sanders, I mean, he's only saying what many people are thinking right now in the Democratic Party. In the Democratic Party, everyone's status. lost. Yeah, a hold uh, of it. Cue that clip with James Carville because I know we only have a ten, this is a ten minute second. We got three clips to get through here. Uh, cue uh, up James party Carville. Needs to to wake up and and. Make sure that we talk about things that are relevant to people. We need to go back to 2018, where we had good, diverse, strong candidates that had real connections to the community and talked about real things. We don't need to become the British Labour Party. I would agree that's on not, that's, not, that. that's a bad thing. It, it, it's not going well over there. But look at the British Labour Party. I mean, we're, we're like talking about he, people voting from jail cells. All right, We're talking about not having a border. I, I mean, come on, people. Be, every day, people are out there struggling. We're trying to get votes in Northern you're Wisconsin. Saying, and you're Western saying you, you're concerned that you consider Bernie Sanders uh, for open borders and for uh, uh, well, incarcerated no, people he voting? He, is that what he, said, he said he's not. He, he said that we should give people a ticket. All right. I'm not. I'm saying what, what he said. If you read Ron Brownstein, he's a thirty-five trillion dollars in spending. Or read all of the the thing. I'm, I'm saying, of course, I would vote for him. But I don't want I don't want the Democratic Party of the United States to be the Labor Party. Did he say he'd vote for Bernie? Yeah. He said he'd vote for Bernie, despite the fact that he's Because he doesn't out. want Trump. He he absolutely oh. he's horrified at another four <laughs> years of Trump. Okay. So so basically yeah. you hate Trump so much that you're willing to turn your country into a socialist nation. Like what's the what what's the what's the what's the uh what's the opposite, right? Wow. He's got good points, though. They got to get a game plan together. Yeah. So we can actually, you know, have some 
decent conversations here about some realistic goals for this country. And okay, now we've got the next clip. This is Bernie Sanders responding to James Carville. James, oh. in all due respect, is a political hack uh, who said very terrible things <laughs> when he was working for Clinton uh, against Barack Obama. I think he said some of the same things. Uh, look, we are taking on the establishment. This is no secret to anybody. We're taking on taking on the establishment. Taking on the establishment. Lord I mean, have mercy. I'm How all many about times taking. This? I'm all about taking on the establishment. Everyone's got a different version of what that means, though. Yeah, that's true. What he thinks we should be doing while taking on the establishment. Well, I'm sick of the the, the Republican establishment. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the the Romneys, the Bushes, the McCains, okay. the old guard GOP establishment. I'm more of the new guard. I like people like Jim Jordan. I like Devin Nunes. I like, obviously, Ron Paul, Rand Paul, that brand of GOP, the libertarian liberty side of the of the GOP, not this establishment side. But, uh, so he's calling him a political hack. With all due respect, he said. Yeah, with all due respect, he's a political hack. Thanks, Bernie. Yeah. Anderson Cooper, just he's always stone cold, his oh, face. Yeah. But so it's getting so bad that you got James Carville, okay, who's who's coming out freaking out. But now the DNC is discussing rules changes to stop Sanders at the convention. What is yeah. that all about, Gary? Well, they're saying they want to go to if if it goes to a brokered convention. I think what they're talking about doing is having the super delegates, which have always been like this this mysterious faction within the Democrat Party, the super delegates, mm -hmm. being able to vote in the first round. And right. if they vote in the first round, that throws the entire delegate balance. Like, all the numbers don't matter. Because if you have a plurality of superdelegates in the process who can vote, mm -hmm. it would just overrule whatever sway that Bernie may have with the delegates he's got. So I think that's the, that's what they're going to try to do. Okay. Was bring the superdelegates in to, to, to throw it to whoever they want. And who's that going to be? Who's that going to be? You know? Um, so... It's not going to be Bernie Sanders. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. It's not going to be Joe Biden. What what chance does Biden have coming back from this? Mm. We can we get that clip ready of him calling that girl a dog faced pony soldier. I mean, what? So the? bad. Bring that up. Let's let's roll that for a minute. The dog faced pony soldier. Oh, grandpa, sit down. <laughs> So, <laughs> so oh gosh. advantage in this race. You've been the vice president. You weren't burdened down by the impeachment trials. So, how? <laughs> in participation. So, how do you explain the performance in Iowa, and why should the voters believe that you can win the national election? I was a Democratic caucus. There been no caucus. No, you haven't. You're a lion dog faced pony soldier. You said you were. You're, now you got to be honest. I'm going to be honest with you. It was a little bit confusing in Iowa. It can, you can kill Number it, kill one. it, kill it, kill it. That was you know, so, so uncomfortable to watch. You know, I, what, who does that? Insulting your the person coming out to your town hall? Did you get a bad feeling off of that, that this, person this who was questioning not, him? Well, that question was yeah. strong. It was strong. And she's like, what happened in Iowa? Yeah. Explain. How did you have such a poor poor showing? And then she says... But he should expect that question. But in, he, instead he insults yeah. her. But that's what I'm saying. Like, his response was, was not okay. You know, I think what he's trying to do here, because he sees that President Trump likes to give people names and he likes to, um, to attack oh, people, wow. like on Twitter. Yeah. I think what he's trying to do is play that same card, but it's not working for him. He's I, not... I think that's yeah. what's happening. I really do. It's disturbing. I mean, I saw him. We did a story uh, last week. He poked a voter in the chest and said, go vote for somebody else. This is not the first time he's done this. And what's that reference from? Um, Dogface. It's from a movie. I guess it's like a John Wayne movie called yeah. The Pony Soldier. And <laughs> he's based. It's like it's like Joe Biden. <laughs> he's using like pop culture references from the 1950s on a 21 year old millennial. Yeah doesn't work like it's that. It's not going to work. I, I just picture him like, you know, when he comes out of his house, if there's anyone on his lawn, you know, like, hey, get off my, get off my lawn, you yeah. hooligan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, oh my wow. God. So, yeah. Sadly. That definitely aged him, too. Well, I think what's what's really sad is that you've got Biden. This is like this is his this is his exit strategy for his political career. It's over. Now, now he's that going was... out on the bottom. Ugh. We'll be right back on the Gcast. Gcast. Don't go anywhere. Gary Franchi will be right back after a word from our sponsors. Your questions ready and load them up into Super Chat because it's time for the D Block on the Gcast. Welcome back. Hey, babe. What's up? Hey, are we talking about more politics at the Oscars? Oh, goodness, really? Oh, yes. Why are you surprised? I'm not. I'm just tired of it. <sighs> I don't get tired. <laughs> <laughs> unless okay, unless I'm, it depends on who it's coming okay from. maybe i'm not tired of it maybe i love it when they yeah. go political because I then i can slam them political i love it no yeah. no i'm not tired of it go That's as political as you about. want go as political as you want yeah. brad you know what because i'm gonna take you to town brad oh i know you are i like it because i like Joaquin. to see hollywood unravel mm. i do because you know it's bs to me I want Rick Ricky Gervais. I want he went back. hard. He went so hard, didn't he? And I hate that guy. He's such a political piece of trash with his with his um with his with his viewpoints. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. But he let Hollywood have it. He he did. I but well, that and was they part of his sometimes. show. What did, what was his comments back on that? On the feedback on that was that something that he genuinely was feeling and he was sharing, or was he just playing into the whole? No, I think he was legitimately tired attitude. of the whole cancel culture, tired of people I preaching. I hate the word. Oh, the oh god! I almost swore on air. The cancel culture. <laughs> There's something wrong with people like that. I just don't like it. You cannot just eliminate somebody. Yeah. After, anyway, let's talk about Brad Pitt. After winning his first ever Oscar for acting, Brad took Brad Pitt took the stage at the 92nd Annual Academy Awards where he opened his speech with a political jab. 
And I believe we have that clip. We can get that ready to roll in a second here. This 56-year-old star accepted his award for Best Supporting Actor at the 2020 Oscars for his part as a stuntman in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Great I gotta say, movie. though, great that was movie. a good movie. It was great. I'm, and and I, 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 I handled him. I was not offended or felt like I liked the way he interjected. Or was it just Brad yeah. Pitt without a shirt on top of that building, oh. on top of that house? <laughs> sweating <laughs> yeah that was good stop <laughs> you're on wrong. valentine's day you're wrong for that oh yeah i think well, i so. think every woman was like oh it's brad. brad pitt is awesome yeah. <laughs> but, i liked him in fight club that was awesome yeah yeah listen I, he's got his opinion and sure i just like the way he expressed it that he, the way he did and i have mine yeah let's take a look and then we'll comment exactly on what he said no, that's in the next clip. <laughs> that wasn't it. We were that was for, Brad Pitt. That was not Brad Pitt. That Screaming. was Fredo. I know, I know. That was a um, TMZ shot. <laughs> I asked the guy, is it get the clip ready? <laughs> it's ready. Okay. Um they're gonna they're gonna the guys in the back room, um once they're they, messing with once us. Once they get off break, they can figure it out. Let's say um once upon a time in Hollywood, his was the first award. Oh, we don't have the clip. Hmm. Um, I could figure it, it out. Let me see where if we could find it. I mean, more or less, the way he expressed himself was, it was it was to the point he wasn't pointing fingers. You know, he was expressing how he felt, how the impeachment trial went, and he brought it up right okay so uh this i'm gonna scan through this clip here and get right through. at what point do you get annoyed gary okay do we have the ndi up okay let's bring it up okay here it is wow thank you this is incredible Really incredible. Thank you to the Academy for this honor of honors. They told me I only have 45 seconds up here, which is 45 seconds more than the Senate gave John Bolton this week. Okay, now I'm gonna pause it real quick. He goes on for another minute or so, but that point he just made, mm -hmm. he's got 45 seconds, and then he takes a jab at the Senate because they didn't call witnesses. And that's what, I mean, that really makes me mad. You know why it makes me mad? It's because this, it's not the Senate's job to do what the House is constitutionally required to do. It's not. They, they, they have the option to do it. But for him to come out and say that, you know what? He's, I think he's wrong. He should okay. not be jabbing at the Senate. He should be jabbing at the House. Okay, okay. For what the House is required to do. End of story. Sorry, that's just where I stand on it. Don't apologize. <laughs> Captain. <laughs> Captain. Captain let's, G. Let's see what else he says here. I'm thinking maybe Quentin does a movie about it. And in the end, the adults do the right thing. Ooh. This really is about Quentin Jerome Tarantino. You are original. You are one of a kind. Uh, uh, the, the film industry would be a much drier place without you. And I, and I love the ethos. You okay, so that's all he says. That he, he, he may have gone too long with the jab. The first part was, you know, it was enough. But, I mean, this is about Quentin's film, Quentin Tarantino's film, right? Mm -hmm. So take the time to say thank you and stick to the script, right? What was even, mo what was even more bizarre, and I didn't ready a clip for this, and it was when Joaquin... Jo Joaquin Phoenix said he shamed Hollywood for drinking milk, and he talked about like artificially inseminating cows, and for and then taking the cows and breeding the cows, and then you're guilty for pouring the cow's milk into your coffee at Starbucks, and you're guilty for pouring it into your cereal in the morning. Yeah, I'm not interested. It's like you know, seriously, dude, That's you're gonna where it's sh too much. You're gonna shame me for for putting cream in my coffee. Mm-hmm. Like, seriously, man? This is the same guy who goes and hangs out with uh, 
the actress uh, Hanoi Jane in front of the White House. Jane Fonda. Yeah. She's living her best life right now. She's standing up for, for <laughs> what she believes in, man. Yeah. She gets arrested every week in D.C. Yeah. She's, she's serious about this. Oh. Don't get me started on climate change, Angie, <laughs> because that's another thing I think is a total hoax. But we could reserve that for another show. Yes. So who had a, a response here? Um, Brad Pitt, politically charged Oscars 2020 speech, getting backlash on social media. Eric Trump slamming Brad Pitt as a smug elitist over the Oscars speech. Let's see. Uh, I, I think I have that. Let me pull up. I'm going to pull up that actual Instagram post from Eric Trump. Here it is. Yeah. I mean, you could definitely expect a comment from the president's son. You guys see that? They're talking about the impeachment trial, right? Okay. So this is, this is Eric Trump commenting. Is this his, I don't know. Is this his, uh, this would be his, I don't know how Instagram works. Is that his Twitter or his Instagram yeah. page? Yeah, when there's a blue okay. checked circle like that, it's so, their Instagram account. So he posted. So mm -hmm. h h did he comment on a Fox Business Instagram? Oh, okay. So he's on Fox Business's Instagram account commenting on their picture. It looks like that. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. So, okay. He's responding to this. What's Oscars he's... ratings fall 25% to an all-time low. So, so Eric Trump comes back and responds, uh, and he says, probably because Americans don't like to be preached to by smug elitists, the elegance has been lost, and America has turned these people out of their homes. Wow. Has tuned, tuned these people out of their homes. You know, think about the golden age of Hollywood. You know, it's like they go up, and they're movie stars, and the silver screen, and they... They go up and they 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 accept the award for their for their performance and then they leave and it's like there was there was I know I know what he's saying the elegance has been lost now they go up there and they use it as a soapbox to attack the president to attack people for you know attack the Senate for not doing the House's job and <laughs> what <laughs> what. You know, for me, it's like, it was, like I said, it was all BS in the golden age, too. There was so much they were hiding and nothing was being yeah, you're right. exposed. And, you know, may, if this is their platform, so be it. If there's somebody up there in the years to come speaking on something that you're passionate about, that's going to be pretty powerful, too. So. I mean, would I, would I be reacting the same way if he was up there praising Donald Trump? appraising trump's policies what i that's i yeah. think that's really the test would i have the same response would i say shut up don't talk about the president and just dance for me D brad you know put on your tap shoes brad and you know do a do a dance because that's what you're paid to do you're paid to yeah. entertain america would i would i have the same reaction and and people who talk like that i just don't like it i don't like i mean actors are still they've earned that academy award for their acting skills, you know? Well, there's there's certainly a lot of affected people in Hollywood. And there's a, a lot, lot of things going on behind the scenes in yeah. Hollywood. So maybe we this don't even is know all about. part of how it's going to come crashing down, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, think about Harvey Weinstein mm -hmm. and the stuff that he was doing. Have you read any of the testimony of those people who have been affected? My goodness. Thank God that guy has been taken down. Thank God. Um. Let's move on to the next segment here in the D block. The D block. This is actually quite funny. Um, somebody's typing over there, like in the background. Sounds like you're making popcorn. <laughs> uh, oh, got... popcorn for Valentine's Day. So let's see here. This is the... okay. This was the president's tweet. Can we pull this up, guys? Someone's writing a novel. I can see. I can hear it. Okay. I'm seeing Governor Cuomo today at the White House. He must understand that national security far exceeds politics. New York must stop all of its unnecessary lawsuits and harassment, start cleaning itself up and lowering taxes, build relationships. <laughs> 
And then he throws but in. But don't bring Fredo. Don't bring Fredo. Oh, my gosh. This, this tweet really highlights a part of President Trump that I think is hilarious. Here he is. He's talking about, like, we're going to resolve these issues that we have with New York. Yeah. And then he just throws this jab right at the end. Right? Yeah. He throws the jab. He throws. I choked on my coffee when I read that. You've been choking on your coffee a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy stuff happening. I keep reading don't about it. Don't call me Fredo. So if you don't, don't know, go now you know. Don't against the family, Fredo. Hmm? Don't make decisions against the family, Fredo. So we've, we have. It's the line, Gary. Hello. Clips. People are going to be shocked, but I never got into the Godfather movies. I never really did. <laughs> Look at your face. I was more of like Goodfellas, Casino. You know, like yeah. I just wasn't really, I wasn't really in the Godfather thing. I Maybe it was because when it came out, I was too busy watching Goonies and Back to the Future. Yeah, you were a kid. You know. But <laughs> we've got, uh, where's the, okay, so the Trump tweet really kicked it off. And so the whole purpose of this, what he's talking about, meeting at the White House with the governor because President Trump hosted Governor Cuomo at the White House to hash out their differences over the administration's ban on New Yorkers from the Trusted Traveler Program, which makes it easier for citizens to return from abroad. And this stems from another issue that's related to the governor, the state of New York, giving illegals driver's license. Driver's license, license yeah. Stan, uh, what is it? So they wanted to... They wanted to go ahead and create this. They're banning this trusted traveler program, removing New York from it because they are putting illegals into the driver's license database. Don't, when you should just pay to see, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've got like Trump and Cuomo in my head, like in the ring. That's what I'm seeing. <laughs> Would you not pay to see that happen? No. I know I'm crazy people. I almost said Frodo. <laughs> um, no, Fredo. Frodo is just as good. The guy's, no. the guy's a total hobbit anyway. Um, right. President Trump tweeted out he was getting ready to meet with Governor Cuomo, but took a whack at Cuomo's brother who works at CNN. Now, let's we got the clip here of uh, the initial <laughs> the reason why he calls him Fredo. Let's play that clip. I think that what no, Cuomo that's not the clip. That's not the clip. Man, um, the first clip, the one that you missed, the one you played accidentally earlier. Is the clip. What are you gonna do about it? I'll ruin you. I'll, you I'll throw you down. Like a pump. Oh my gosh. No, I thought I thought that's who you were. No, punk ass bitches from the right call me Fredo. My name is Chris Cuomo. I'm an anchor on CNN. Oh, you're much Fredo is from the Godfather. He was oh. a weak brother. I'm smart. He was a weak I brother. It's even worse that he like, like says that. Them. Your and they use it in an Italian aspersion. Any of you Italian? Oh, Are you I Italian? Got, I got a it's a fing insult to your people. But don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. It's an insult to your fing people. It's like the N word for us. Yeah, oh. Guinea's really make me laugh. Stop. You can insult me like that. I, I didn't insult you. You call me Fredo. It's like I call you punk bitch. You like that? <laughs> you <laughs> you, you <laughs> call me Fredo. You know my name. Don't tell me you're innocent. Because it insults my intelligence. <laughs> you did not think my name was <laughs> Fredo. Look, you be a man, Look at me, I'm not Fredo. You want to be a man out yeah. here. And act like a man. What's the matter with He is Fredo. He's like playing the character. Hey, I know what you said. Listen, Listen, I don't have a problem with you. Yeah, you're or at least the character from the movie. Oh my god, Father. I'm ruining your shit. I can throw you down these stairs like a fucking Oh, please. You don't want to. So you can fuck. Well, why don't you do it? Go take a swing. Oh, you want to call me Fredo? Take a swing. Oh, take that guy's seen way too many. Watch your fucking hands. Take a swing. Come on, boy. You want to call me shit? Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. <laughs> okay, so that is the reference President Trump is using because of that explosive exchange. Oh, yeah. Now, the president also. Uh, that will up, live on forever. <laughs> that moment. Of the president. Outside of Marine One, getting on that helicopter. This is the president responding to that I think moment. That what Chris Cuomo did was horrible. His language was horrible. He looked like a total out of control animal. He lost horrible. it. And frankly, I don't think anybody could defend him because he spews lies every night. So I don't know why anybody would defend him. But Chris Cuomo was out of control. I watched it. I thought it was terrible. So I don't know who's defending him. Maybe they didn't see it. 
maybe they haven't gotten the full picture, but I think anybody that would have seen Chris Cuomo would have said that was a disgrace. You've never seen me do that. You've never seen me do that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so there you have it. Uh, my goodness. Fredo. That was great, though. This is hysterical stuff to me. I mean, the it's president's tweets are, are hilarious in their own right. In this situation, they really are. Oh, my gosh. So, oh, Joey Saladino. He's, a, he's actually a YouTuber. You can bring up NDI. He's a YouTuber. And... How do you know... Who is he? Uh, he's actually running for Congress. He's a big YouTuber. He does like these prank videos on YouTube. Oh, I bet you watch him. I've seen him before. He yeah. does like these like, like gold digger videos, I think, some of them, where they get these beautiful <laughs> women, or uh, he walks up to beautiful women and he pulls up oh. in, a, in a fancy oh, car. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, he, and he's like, tries to get the, the girl to go jump in his car with him. I know you who know? you're talking about now. I, I'm sure those things are totally staged, but they're funny. Uh, but he replied to the president saying, under Democrat leadership, New York City is turning back into an S-hole. S-hole. We need Don Jr. to be governor. <laughs> so we've got only about two minutes left. Let's jump to the closing here. This was cool. The Rush Hour Baby. I love that. The Rush Hour Baby. Bring this up as B-roll. We'll talk over it. Mm. West Valley police officer delivers a baby in the middle of can Rush Hour. Can you imagine? Track. I mean, can you imagine being in the moment of that? No video. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I, I can do it, though. Don't worry. Because it's right here at the bottom of the list. Did you ever think that was going to happen to us, Gary? All the times we were rushing to the hospital. Did you ever think we wouldn't make it? Look at that. So this is, I'm going to bring it back to the beginning here. But you can see here, this is the officer getting out of the vehicle and he walks up to the car and the guy runs up to him. Let's, let me pull the audio back up. Guys, what's going on? Uh, my, my baby's uh, outside here. Okay. <laughs> he says, my baby's outside. Oh, that she had delivered it. She's that delivering part? the baby in the car oh, and the gosh. police officer is running back to his car to get the... Uh, a blanket, to get, something. To get the, yeah, not not quite running, but getting his rubber gloves on. He's going to deliver that baby. Yeah. They're going to deliver that baby. This happened in Utah. The police Look officer's body camera recording when he ended up delivering a baby in the middle of rush hour traffic. West Valley police officer Jeremy Dean said he was on patrol. So. Woo! Superman to the so, rescue. So there's some love right there. Yes. Closing out the G-Cast with some, a beautiful moment of, um. A baby being delivered by a police officer. Saving the day. Saving, God bless the... Saving the day. God bless Certain the police people. officers out there for sure. Yeah, all the, all all the fathers out there. Yeah. yeah. Any final thoughts, hon? Happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Keep spreading the love. Absolutely. Keep spreading the love. Don't spread that coronavirus, Don't though. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun, babe. And remember... Fredo loves you. <laughs> Don't go against the family. Don't go against the family. Don't ever go against the family. Don't ever go against the family. <laughs> Studio guests. So we excited don't about this. Yeah. So comment below and subscribe. Hit the link down there. Make sure you are on the notification list by tapping that bell. Woo! Bye, everybody. Bye, -bye everyone. We'll see you. Stay gold.